Today I'm gonna show you how to connect NetBeans to MySQL database from another PC using IP address. But before that please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. For example, I have another computer here. Open my SQL workbench from this server PC and log into local instance server. I already created a database here which I will go into use in connecting NetBeans to a database from another PC. Click administration tab, then add an account. Add an account. Enter login name and create a password. Then go to administrative role, check all checkboxes. Then go to schema privileges, click add entry, then choose the database that you want to use. After that, select all or check all privileges. Go to NetBeans and click services tab. Right click databases and select new connection. Select MySQL connector. Click Add and find the MySQL Connector Java. To download the MySQL Connector Java, just simply go to MySQL website and find the MySQL Connector. Open the downloaded files and extract the specified folder. Go back to NetBeans and locate the downloaded Java connector. Click Next. Then enter the IP address of the computer where the database is installed. To get the IP address of the computer, simply run the IP protocol configuration in the command prompt. Enter the database name, then type the username and password of MySQL connection. Then click the test connection button to check the connection. Check the connection if it is succeeded. Then click finish. Expand the databases and check the connection of your driver that you have configured earlier. You can rename the display name in order to find it easily. As you can see here, I have successfully connected my MySQL database to NetBeans. You can see here the database that you want to use. You can also write a query here to easily check the data. Now we will create a login form with database connection. Go to project tab and create a new project. Select Java with and then Java application. Change the name of project name. Expand the project. Expand the source package. Then right-click your project and create a new JFrame. Type a name of your new form. Then click Finish. Create a design for login form. Insert label for username and password label.
then JTEX field for username. Use JPassword field for password text field in order to hide the characters for password. Add J button for login and exit. Rename the variable name of the text fields in order to identify it easily in writing a code. Now, we will write the codes for login button. Just simply right click the login button and select events, then action listener. Create a variable name for getting the text from username and password text fields. Create also a string for a query of selecting the data that has the data of username of password in the database table. The user and pass variable is the value of the text field that the user has entered. Now we will connect to MySQL using the JDBC driver manager interface. First, create a try catch statement. When an error occurs, Java will normally stop and generate an error message. The technical term for this is, Java will throw an exception, throw an error. This is the use of try catch statement. The try statement allows you to define a block of code to be tested for errors while it is being executed. The catch statement allows you to define a block of code to be executed if an error occurs in the try block. Inside the try statement, create a string for username and password of MySQL connection. Username and password when you log in in the MySQL connection. To get the URL, go to Services tab then right click your driver connection. Click Properties and then find the database URL. Just copy only the line up to the database name. Then, get the driver class name. To get the class driver, go again to Driver Connection Properties and find the driver class. Then, copy the driver class. Now we will establish the connection. We will create a connection variable. It will attempt to establish a connection to the database by using the given database URL.
After establishing the connection, we will prepare the query statement. This is the function of prepared statement. After that, we will execute the prepared statement. In short, this is the result of the SQL query. Before getting the result of query, we need to check first if the user entered data in the text field. If the text fields are blank, there will be a dialog box containing a message that the user needs to enter the username and password. Then, if the text fields have data, the code will check if the data gathered is matched with the database. If there is a result then the next code will be executed. And if the result set is empty, there will be message dialog telling that username and password is incorrect. Add also code for the exit button. Now, we will try to test the code. 